Five, four, three, two, one. Hello and good evening and welcome to my tour of Yorkshire preview. I am once again delighted to be joined by Taylor Gunman of Madison Genesis. Taylor, how are you? Good, thanks. Yourself? Very well, thank you. Now, at the outset, we will make clear to everybody this is the tour of Yorkshire, not the tour de Yorkshire, as uh, you might see somewhere or some of the climbs are called Coat de something. That, that's not happening here. This is just... A proper good old fashioned preview. Let's stick to the, the English names. Sound fair enough, Taylor? Yeah, sounds good. I think there's a bit of ASO flair in there, but hey, <laughs> Tour de France is good for Yorkshire region, and why not continue supporting it? <laughs> right, okay, so we're going to have a kind of in depth look at the three stages. Uh, Taylor knows some of the climbs quite well, so he's going to give us his. Uh, his view on them, uh, and then we'll, we'll have a wee talk through some of the favourites. So stage one, we go from Bridlington to Scarborough, 173 kilometres, relatively flat, uh, and then we have the climb to Gothland, which is 1.3k at 9.7%. Then we have probably the defining moment of the stage, which is the climb of Robin Hood's Bay, which we've seen before in this race. It's 1.5k, 10.3%, but it does crest with 28k to go. So, interested to hear what you think of this stage, Taylor, and how you think it's going to come together towards the end. Yeah, I would definitely want to be taking Bernie Eisel's um, approach to Robin Hood Bay, like last year. He stopped halfway for a hamburger and a barbecue. So, um, <laughs> But that was also last year, the last year. Um, after Robin Hood Bay, it seems like they took us up every climb they could, including people's driveways, to get to Scarborough. This year, it's a bit more direct. So, you know, I was looking at the finishing top climb versus Robin Hood Bay, and they reckon by the top of Robin Hood Bay, it's still going to take at least 35 to 40 minutes. So it's not going to be – it's going to be fast, but it's not going to be exactly – too fast with the rolling roads and, and run into Scarborough but you know Robin Hood Bay's on that borderline isn't it maybe the fit climb the fit, the fit sprinters will make it over and it could be a sprint of sorts but yeah it'll be interesting to see how controlled it is I mean technically speaking there is not a, a huge amount of climbing in the actual stage itself people might remember back to the stage last year you were talking about which was the final stage which was harder than this uh, making it the first stage should make it a bit easier, don't you think? Yeah, if you look at the balance of most squads, uh, the representation of teams have been, I guess not pure sprinters, but strong sprinters who can get over these climbs. And when you've got technically two out of three chances of a sprint finish, I think that's the direction it could head. Um, just I, I was, I've been trying to remember it, what stage it was last year at Tour of Britain that Dylan Groenwagen won and it was supposed to be a, a race where we all finished in bits but you know these World Tour guys are very well professional and they know what they need to do to get what they want out of a race so you know if you look at Green Edge and if you, if you look at who um, Lotto Jumbo have as well with Dylan Groenwagen coming back it, it could be a, a select, well, I guess not a full out and right sprint, but it's going to be a, a sprint of sorts. Yeah, we've got Caleb Ewan from Orica, Danny Van Poppel from Sky, Dylan Gronewegen from Jumbo. Covid is haven't confirmed yet, but Bahani is on the, the provisional list. We've got Brenton Jones from GLT Condor, Planka, Wild Sheets. So yeah. We've got a, a number of sprinters who who are also relatively good climbers. A guy like you, and you know, he, he seems to fly up the climbs. He's so light. Uh, I would imagine he would be looking at the first stage and thinking he's got a good chance of being there at the end. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he's a sucker for punishment because he's coming back again, isn't he? So they're all here at like Yorkshire last year. Scott Thwaites has come off a strong cobble, um, classic season as well. So, and you know, the thing with Thwaites on, on our overall is this is his home. So just like me technically kind of doing sun tour on roads I've raced in the past, it's the same for these guys too. It's important just that having that local support is no different to the French at the Tour de France. So it's always those little motivators along the way, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I, if we had to discuss the scenario, I would imagine 
I'd put my money on a bunch, a, a sprint of about 50, 60 riders. What do you think? Yeah, def- definitely. I, I personally would, was looking at someone like Danny Van Poppel, to be honest. He seems to miraculously get over these big climbs and then be it isolated or running off a train, he can do it by himself. And I think the guys like Lotto and Orica are going to be looked at and relied upon by everyone else. So, um, yeah, it's going to put a statement out there quite quickly, I think. Yeah, it's a good first stage. Weather seems to be okay for it as well. With, for people not in Britain, a kind of really cold snap this week with snow. Uh, but that's to ease off temperatures have to rise a little bit and not much wind on that first stage, I think. No, it's, it's just the only weather report I read was light wind. So if it's not even mentioning case per hour, you're still going to get something off the shore there coming into Scarborough, but that's the last couple of miles, to be honest, and most of the race is inland. And realistically, only about a quarter of it is the same as the Scarborough stage last year. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a, a, a good, well, you know, a moderate-sized bunch selection. Right, okay, cool. Stage two, uh, we have... The easiest of the three stages, there's just one climb right in the middle of it, Loft House, 1.7k, 11.4%, so certainly not an easy climb, uh, but with <laughs> with a lot, uh, probably more than half of the stage still to go, should be controlled, and it looks like a, a big bunch sprint in Harrogate. Yeah, I think this one's almost guaranteed, so I think from how the land lies after day one, we'll get a real fear idea but I don't think it's going to be easy as well um, you know the, the middle stage last year at Sir Yorkshire was slightly shorter also but that was also just as hard because all the teams didn't let the break get over two minutes um, they were always chasing always controlling the race and you know with these shorter stages the break will go but they just they don't give it a big lead they don't give it you know, there's no mucking around, so it's it's going to be a race like 120 k's of every other last 120 k's of any other race. So it'll still be fast and hard. There won't be any waiting as well because you can't risk that. You don't have any time to react. So it's going to be with, with like Gus. It's going to be yeah, survival of the fittest again, but it will be probably quite controlled. It's uh, stages on a Saturday, so you'd expect big crowds. I mean. For yourself, does that make a difference? Do you notice a race which is better attended than, say, something in the Spring Cup that you've done recently? Yeah, it is different. I still remember going up Sutton Bank um, at Yorkshire last year, and you know this is an A road climb. Like it's at the bank, you know, especially for a lot of the British people who'd, who'd be watching, it, it, the road itself is nothing spectacular, but because it was a challenging climb and people were so, you know, again, cycling, everyone can, can watch it for free. It was insane. It was deafening. And it's, you know, you listen to world tour riders talk about going up the Alps and the Pyrenees and the Tour de France and they can't hear themselves. And here I am, this is my first taste of it kind of thing. And it, it is shocking and, but shocking in a positive way because it's quite amazing to see people get into it, you know, I'm yeah. just the little guy in a big pond, so um, to be a part of that atmosphere is mind blowing, and it leaves you, with, you know, lifelong memories. Yeah, the Yorkshire fans are among the best. We all remember Tour de France a number of years ago. Yeah. Now, I mean, the, the stages were, I mean, the amount of fans, spectators was, was outstanding. This race has kind of fed off that. I, I see they're looking to get World Championships. Uh, so, yeah. So the York, I mean, the Yorkshire fans' their reputation is. Is really going before them these days. Uh, stage two, so we're looking at Ewan, Van Poppel, Gronewegen, Buhani, riders like that. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Same again. I just, look, the JLT boys definitely have their sprint lead out dialed as well. You know, they've been quite successful. Brenton has ridden Pro Continental with Drapic before he's experienced his race to these guys. Um, he he is a mate of mine, and off the bike, he's you know before the start line, and he's a good guy, great guy to chat to. But man, he he just puts the blinders on, and he's a racehorse all the way, and and you know he's he's going to be competition for those big guys, and if, if they underestimate him the smallest bit, I'm sure 
it could be a British win. Yeah, and you'll be the I mean, small team there as well on it. For us watching, Sorry. for us watching on, you know, if if one of the British teams manages to take a stage win, you, you can't underestimate how important that is to sponsors and the fans watching. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, and you know, you know, I'm trying not to uh, off put Madison here because, of course, our my team we have our own goals and objectives that we're going to go for. But if we're looking at it at a sprint stage. Brenton's proved how fast he is in spring cups already. So, yeah, he's definitely going to be a good challenge for sure. <laughs> and then we move on to the third stage. Uh, you could probably call it the hell of the north. <laughs> Not quite Paddy yeah. Bay, but the, I was talking to one of the jumbo coaches about it and he was asking, if, remembering the, the Sheffield stage in the tour that Nibali won, and I was explaining that this is infinitely harder. Uh, we have four monster climbs inside the closing kind of 20k maybe even less than 20k we have a deep car 1.7k 8.5 percent descent straight into the next climb wig whistle 1.4k 9.1 percent descent straight into the next climb Uden height 1k 12 percent descent climb again mid hopestons 1.4k 10 percent and then we have a 5k descent to the line that Last 20 kilometres is about as hard as I think you can find in the whole of Britain. Yeah, and to, to be honest, there's also a whole lot of uncategorised climbs on there. We did the course reconnaissance and the first round of Spring Cup, Cup which we, I know we're going to talk about later, I crashed with the K to go. So I, so I sat in the car, thank God, for the first, for our course reconnaissance. And, you know, there, there's a six... Uh, you know, there's a good solid 6Ks of gentle climbing at 6 7% there on the course, which the profile doesn't show. So um, there's a lot of nasty surprises that aren't even pointed out on the profile as well. So you're not going to – you can't underestimate this, and the best way to label it is an RDN's classic, to be honest. And then we have a fairly strong crosswind for the majority of the stage as well. Yeah, across, across the moors as well is going to be, you know, incredibly wide open. Um, you know, there's never going to be any respite. Um, I, I don't know. Again, it's kind of like the last stage of Yorkshire last year. It's going to be the course that defeats the riders more so than the riders racing each other. So it's all well and good. And I think, you know, Yorkshire takes us at all these slow and steep climbs deliberately because of their fans <laughs> they get to see a lot more of us <laughs> yeah. you know going past them at, at, at 8 k's an hour up Shimbin Wall is going to be a lot more thrilling than coming past at 60 so I'm sure so I think that's a cruel cruel uh, intention but that finishing lap's is going to get the same result if we only did the finishing lap as we did if we had up 200 k's in our league it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a mongrel <laughs> Most certainly, uh, and clearly, small small group, maybe even a solo rider. We'll talk about the, the, the favourites later, which will be the exact same for this stage. Uh, focusing a little bit more on the British teams, obviously we've got we've got Raleigh, we've got One Pro, Condor, Madison Genesis, your own team, we've got Bike Channel Canyon, and we've got Team GB, who bring a couple of the, the Wiggins boys who didn't get selected. We also, I suppose, have Aqua Blue, uh, the Irish team. So we've got a huge number of, of local riders, uh, local teams. Now, we've seen in the past the teams go for sprint jerseys, KOM jerseys, because that realistically is, is the achievable target. Would you imagine that would be the same thing again this year? Yeah, for sure. I think you can't write off Adam Blythe for, for getting up in those two sprint days as well. He's He showed off early in the season. He's come agonisingly close with two seconds. Um, so for Aqua Blue, I think they've got quite a few bases covered, um, but they can also race quite aggressively with guys like Matt Bramier in, in the field. Um, Rally's new signing Enrique from what five years at Movistar and then a year with Willier. He's um, he's been strong, so you know he, he's got a pedigree about him. So um, he's no average bike rider for sure and he's definitely going to show 
his strengths and, and everything that he's learned from the time abroad in a World Tour team. You've also got guys like Lawless, who won ZLM under 23. So, you know, he's obviously in hot form at the moment too. Maybe being part of a national team might contradict interests if other guys also have personal hopes in those first two days. Kind of like any other national team, really. It's it's hard to really pull guys around a single person. But, hey, if they're professional, they'll get the job done and they'll get the result for it. So, um, yeah, there's options. <laughs> talk, talking about Spring Cup, is that four rounds we've had so far? Yeah, four rounds for sure, yeah. Um, been all four different types of rounds, to be honest. We started off with GP Klondike, which was first for the... See, the first time the race has been introduced to the season and was supposed to be a, a race of attrition, but ended up in a bunch sprint. Um, after that, we had Tour, Tour de Wilds, which again was supposed to be a bunch sprint, but ended up a race of attrition. So it shows you what kind of racing or how unpredictable racing is here in the UK. Um, I miss Chorley. That was the, um, the hilly one of them all. Uh, where Burby showed his son to a form again. Um, then we just had the British version of the Trove Rowley on, which is the sequel classic, which is also, um, well, that, that's not part of the pr- premier calendar, but it's the fourth race that we've had. And that, uh, again, is like any gravel race or any classic race. It's a lot of luck and um, a very hard day, <laughs> for sure. With a controversial ending, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's, can't take you, you can see anywhere. sides of the story, can't you? So uh, <laughs> the, the only problem is, is someone's winning salute photo as a guy pulling a finger. So <laughs> you know, it, I think I, I, I saw it, and I can understand the people in in the UK. They're disgusted in it. I can. Then I saw um, an Australian website share it, and the Aussies laughed at it because it's what the Aussies <laughs> are like. And I think you might find the Kiwis are a little bit embarrassed, but. Just like anything, there's two sides to the story, and to be honest, all credit to Dan for winning. And you know, maybe you know, Hayden's learned a lesson the, the hardest way, I guess, which is unfortunate for him. But um, hey, he's gone viral. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's apologised, and it's it's all done now. The heat of the moment and everything. Yeah, he is actually a kind-hearted guy. Like, like he's, he is a typical Kiwi, heat of the moment, and like I said, he's just reacted poorly and. People are disgusted, so good on him for accepting it and releasing a, an apology. Uh, you mentioned Trobro, Leon, uh, Madison were over there, and a ridiculously tough race. Uh, what did you think about it? Oh, it, it's phenomenal. I think Cycling Tips did an article about the, the most um, you know unrecognised semi classic or something like that. It, it's a you know. <laughs> There aren't really words to describe it. We had a quite a bad run. We had two guys in hospital, one being hit by a car, um, which is all a bit too serious at the moment. Um, but we've got, you know, guys like Connor Swift that's coming through, and he's proving his own pedigree for a young kid who's only twenty. He finished, I say, only 30, 33rd, but. Mike was just saying he was agonisingly close to just holding on to that front group. It was just one small mistake which came from, I guess, inexperience that just made that difference. So, you know, if you're looking at someone coming through the ranks over time, Connor's emerging at his own rate, for sure. And that front group did contain uh, some not bad riders, I suppose, your your Demars and your Chabonelles. Yeah, Freddie Beckhart's had an amazing spring, hasn't he? So he's been in the break at Dipana to just an all-round aggressive rider. So I remember racing him when I first went to Belgium and he was took a mate of mine, Josh Atkins, out for a ride. And, oh, yeah, and he was telling me about how he's one more season and then I live a normal life. Now he's early on and racing for Wanty, so... Hey, good on him. <laughs> yeah, he's had a, 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 an especially good uh, season so far. Been up there in a good few races. Uh, right, the stars. So as usual, we've we've done some stars for the, the, the race. You had difficulty filling out your star section. Uh, I'm obviously quite good at just p- 
padding riders out in there. We start with the wild cards. You've gone for Omar Fraile of uh, Dimension Data. Yeah, like I said, the final stage is going to be quite like an RDN's classic. And, you know, he is, I think it was Liège that he raced. Yeah. He's on Pro Cycling Stats before. And 25th, it's, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's going to be quite a similar toll on the legs at the end. So... He could be a wild card, and the thing is, is like I said, the race is going to heavily impact the riders and, and how they ride, so whether you've got a team or not, he could be strong enough to just put his head down and make it to the finish. I've gone for your teammate, Matt Holmes. Uh, been impressed with him so far this season. I was watching last night, last year's uh, closing stage, and when the bunch was blown to pieces on, I can't remember what climb it was, he had enough uh, in him to go to the side of the road, have a joke with somebody that was ringing a bell, then come back into the bunch, have a joke with a sky rider. Uh, a year older, a year better potentially. I, I, I like to look at him for a wild card. Who knows, you know, it could be KOM jersey because he's a fan of a break. But uh, what's he been like this season? Yeah, there's no doubt in his form. Um, there's, yeah, he's riding phenomenally at the moment um that was actually his parents on the side of the road oh, holding up a can of coke so uh, um yeah he was he was asking for a bottle and they didn't give him a bottle which is the joke i think so um but yeah so his parents are there uh but yeah you you can't deny you can't deny matt's form and his strength at the moment um for matt it's using it at the right time at the right place um you know, his effort up the climb in Chorley on the fourth out of five laps was phenomenal. He rode across a minute and a half gap, got there and kept going until he blew. And then the next lap when Bibby went up the road, he was tired. So, you know, it's more so the biggest thing we've got. Luckily, it's a UCI race. We can use race radios. If you can talk the man through it, he's probably... a he is going to be a good wild card for sure. Um, going around the finishing circuit in Fox Valley, he was just riding away from all our guys. So he's strong. If we can harness that energy, he's going to be a, a certain th threat for sure. You know, if he can give Bibby a run for his money, and Bibby's a world standard, I believe. What's saying that he isn't as well? So. One Star Riders, you've gone for defending champion Vokler and Luke Rowe of Team Sky. Vokler, a surprise winner, I would say, last season. Not many people had predicted him beforehand. Uh, he's great on this type of road, though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's almost, be it that he's in the bunch or not, it's, it's almost going to be or feel like a long day in a breakaway. So that's kind of why I've put him there. He's French and... Being like our Frenchman, Alex Blaine, they're full of passion. <laughs> we just like to say, you know, just, you know, there's the panache. He's going to race. If he's, if he's turning up and he's going to put the number one number on, I don't. I'm sure he's probably not going to sit last wheel. I think that'd be the honest opinion. And you'd like to think he'd give it a good go. Um, guys like Ro, there's Tour de France. You know, he's just come off strong classics, and there's Tour de France still coming up and everything like that. So. I'm sure guys like him, if he's going to prove he's up to being race fit for the tour and a good day out, you know, you watch, I was watching how they're riding at Sun Tour. They ride hard on the flats, just him and Stenard, and then they go up to the hills and they still rode hard, although the race was up the road kind of thing. So they're very professional and he could be almost Sky's wild card for them. Yeah, I've, I've got him at one start as well. I've also gone for uh, Stefan Rosetto, who was last man standing in the Liège break. I think he was fifth here a couple of years back for Kofidis. Strong rider. Uh, and I've also picked Manuel Seni of BMC. Uh, Italian, smallish climber. BMC come with a couple of options. He was second in a race recently in Italy. He, he gets up the, the short climbs uh, quite well, but we'll have to wait and see. Team orders, two stars, you've got Bookwalter, Kreuzweg and Gegenhart. Yeah, I think the first thing with Brookwater and um, and just BMC as a whole, they're, they're only turning up with six riders um, due to injury and everything like that. So if they, you know, if they can keep their profile 
low, which, you know, the, the first two stages don't exactly suit them outright. They could, again, in a kind of a aggressive roller attacking Thomas Voigtler way, they can get, a, get away up the road and win the tour with six men, you know. The responsibility doesn't lie with them. Um, Kreuzweg, depends on how he's recovered from his altitude training camp. I think, um, was it Inring or something on Twitter said he's, you know, had 20 days in altitude. So if he's had a hard, you know, it depends on how well he's going to recover from that. Bit Giro soon as well. Um, that takes me back to Omar Frali. You know, he's got the Giro coming up as well, according to pro cycling stats. So these are guys that are needing a test event like this, you know, a hard, hard day in Yorkshire to prepare for a hard day at the Giro. How funny is that? <laughs> and Gig and Hart from Sky, you you would imagine he doesn't he won't get many options as for being team leader. This is probably one looking at their team. Yeah, exactly. With with the squad that they do have as Sky, you know, I'm sure it's his chance to shine. You know, it would have been cool to see guys like Boswell here as well, but he's he's also racing at uh, Romandy at the moment, but yeah, it's kind of like the Yates brothers. They didn't sign with Sky because they don't want to become part of the machine, as it were. So um, the fact that guys like Guggenhardt, this is his chance to do something to maybe break that mould. And that's what you'd like to think Sky probably support. You know, he's done his time as a rider already with um, action. So, yeah, I'm sure he's definitely going to be up there for it unless he's had a heavy training session or, you know, like a training block coming up because he's still young. So Yeah, he's just 20, yeah. 22, I think. Uh, my two-star riders, I, I agree, Brooke Walter, 11th in the Tour of the Alps recently, second on the final stage, has a fast sprint, which is important for bonus seconds for intermediate sprints here. I've got Soren Craig Anderson of Sunweb and uh, Moritz Lammertink of Katusha, both quite similar Arden style riders, as you mentioned already, that's the type of rider who I think is going to shine here. Uh, and coming from the World Tour teams, if they are selected, because it's still provisional just now, I would imagine they would be up there challenging. Three stars, I like your boldness. You've gone for Bibby and you've gone for Serge Pills. Bibby, that winning truly was mightily impressive. Yeah, and, and just even Santor, you know. Um, he, he's been riding well and when Bibby's motivated he's hard to stop so um, you, I, I had to put a local rider in there of course Holmes and Bibby are, are definitely two locals that can step up um, and fly the Union Jack as it were so they're going to be the good ones from the UK scene on the hills again like I said it's just a race where people are worn down um, Tom Stewart's always up for a good race like this, and same as Pete Williams from One Pro, so you can't write those guys off. But, you know, they, they could, those are the guys that are also going to get up the road and get the King of the Mountain jersey. So that's going to be the main selection from the UK side. Serge Powell's, again, Arden's classic kind of rider. He's done Yorkshire last year. He seemed to fly under the radar and still get there towards the end. Um, I think, to be honest, on paper, if you look at it, someone like or a team like Dimension Data is probably going to be one of the stronger teams. Young guys like Ben O'Connor, I never had the opportunity to be teammates with him at ISOA, but we just missed each other by a year. But I've had the honour of chasing him <laughs> while he's been up the road, and you know, he's hard work to chase. I can tell you that much from experience. So, um. You know, he's a kid who's developing really quickly. So in, in the world of cycling, he's, he's definitely going to be coming up through the ranks for sure. And like I said, on that whole scale, dimension data could through, uh, prove to be quite a threat. And another one of the former Ice Away crew, Chris Hamilton, uh, riding here yeah. as well. So interesting, a few of the, the, the old boys of Ice Away getting together in Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, the alumni for Ice Away... Swiss wellness are there. Um, you know, Chris, the Hurricane Hamilton, as he is known for, um, you know, he's got a three-year contract with Giant Alperson, and that kid is the nicest kid out. Uh, 
I've got a lot of time for Chris, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. But if we're talking alumni from Andrew and Steve's hard work, you've also got Steele von Hoff, Brenton Jones there as well. Um, I was looking at it and I was trying to work out there's quite a few riders. Of course, you've got Jack Haig racing, Normandy, uh, Romandy at the moment too, Will Clark, um, Paddy Bevan still ticking along as well. So Nathan Hass is, is performing on one of the King of the Mountain jersey here last year as well. So it shows you they've got a keen eye for it. So. <laughs> Most certainly. Um, my three star riders have gone for Kreuzweg. You mentioned that three weeks on TA day, that's a, a long altitude block. Uh, some people think it's too long, but I'm sure the Jumbo guys know what they're doing. Comes here, ready to test his legs. They're happy it's not going to rain because you see the, the, the Giro guys in Romandy just now risking colds and flus, not ideal. I think he'll be good. I've got Gagan Hart as well because Sky will no doubt blow the race apart on the final stage and set a really fast pace like they did last season. Big ask for him to win, but I'm sure he's going to be good here. And I've, I've also got Scott Thwaites, local boy, as you've mentioned, probably riding for the, the, the best team. The climbs at the end, surely right on his limit, but being near to, to his hometown and stuff is, is going to kind of spur him on, I think, to the, to the end and to probably perform better than maybe anybody even thinks he can do. Uh, okay, Taylor, if you have to pick the winner, who are you going for? Oh... That's definitely going to be a hard one, to be honest. Uh, I don't think it's straightforward. I can't really say anyone just because of how hard that final stage is. But like I said, guys like Brookwater, I think is I've only rated him a two-star. But BMC do well over here in the UK. You look how well Rowan Dennis rode at Tour of Britain last year as well. And, you know, they might not have the right size or full squad, but he could be a good rider. He's... If he's gone second in the final stage at Tour of the Alps, he's definitely on hot form at the moment. But yeah, like it's just that unpredictable. Unless there's Valverde, that's the unpre- <laughs> unpredictable nature of, uh, I guess, an Ardennes classic style race. <laughs> Only it's a fool. Be, it's going to be a hard race. I think that's why Boyko was so surprising when he won. Only a fool would predict this race. So I will go with uh, Scott Thwaites, local boy. I like the story. A very strong team. I think Thwaites could be the the rider we see winning this stage, but I agree it's going to be very unpredictable on that final day. Yeah, exactly. And like I said, it's definitely going to be a, a weather, weather decided, be the crosswinds on the moors. Um, all the UK teams have done their homework. We've all tried riding the, t- the as much as we can, but everyone's going to want something out of this race. It's Yorkshire. The people and the fans and everything are amazing. So it's it's going to be a good race for sure. And a successful race for Madison Genesis would be including possibly a spell in a jersey. A stage win would obviously yeah. be unreal. Uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for sure. You know, we, we've, um, we don't have a race program for January, February. And, you know, when we had our first race at Klondike, everyone's, finding their race leagues still kind of thing, be it some, the guys who've done Normandy, Johnny McAvoy has, you know, really come strong again. And this guy's pedigree has done the Paris Bay with Endura. Um, Rich Hanley is currently loving his time on the bike and he's also finished top 10 at Yorkshire and second King of the Mountains last year for his own teammate. Um, so we bring our strong, strongest squad at the moment. Um, time up the road, time in a jersey. And I think guys like Matt Holmes is just going to look forward to just doing the same as last year at Yorkshire and just give it stick to the big guys, I think. And if we can harness his energy and get him to use it at the right time, he's going to give them a bit of a fright. Brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, well, Taylor, yeah. thank you very much for taking time out to come back on and preview Yorkshire. Sure. I hope it goes well for you and the team. I hope. Spelling a jersey, a good finish, and uh, enjoying the race. So thank you very much, Taylor. Best of luck. Cheers, thank you. Awesome.